so I call the member for Bell Main. Sorry. Mr Temporary Speaker, I rise today to speak about the work of Leichhardt Council, which covers the majority of my electorate. For the past 13 years, I've been privileged to represent my local community as Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Councillor on Leichhardt Council. Now, a lot of people ask, what would a Green government look like? What would the Greens do if they had control of the purse strings? Well, while we Greens only had six out of 12 on that council, we provided the leadership, the direction and the stability on that council. Uh, if we have a look at the former council, the former four years, we saw a coalition between Labor, the Liberals and the Independents, where Labor was mayor for one year, then Liberals were mayor for one year, then an Independent mayor and then Liberal again. Labor, Liberal, Independents all voting with each other to try and keep the Greens out. But what did this council do as compared to last council when it comes to these critical matters, for example, of key infrastructure? This council spent 5.5 million on footpaths, the former council 4 million. This council spent 7 million on roads, the former council 5.1. This green led council spent on seawall projects $837,000 as opposed to 500 on the former. This council invested 2.4 million in stormwater drains and stormwater management as opposed to 514. Basic infrastructure, which is the commitment of that council. Spending on wharves increased from 220 to 430. And our public toilets, Mr Temporary Speaker, that hadn't been upgraded in decades, saw $174,000 spent on them upgrading a whole range of public toilets in our area. When it comes to key building projects, the former council could only manage one miserable $2 million project. This council delivered a new Balmain library in excess of $3 million, the full upgrade of Leichhardt Aquatic Centre in excess of $6 million, an upgrade to the Hannaford Centre over one2 a new service centre for the community, $4 million, as well as a Living Streets project, a new nursery Annandale, and a whole range of major projects, over $15 million in projects when the former council could only manage just over two. There was a lack of direction, a lack of leadership, and a lack of focus from that former Greens Labor Council. This council has also supported, this council and my electorate, local business chambers, doubling the direct financial investment that this council has entered into with our business chambers. The former council used to fund them around $120,000, this council one hundred and eighty. This Green Set Council has prioritised the delivery of infrastructure and services to support young families in our area as well. The Council, on the previous term, invested a measly $350,000 in our playgrounds. This Council, $1.6 million, delivering 17 new or improved playgrounds. The Council has also committed an unprecedented $10 million to new childcare services and has already supported the delivery of over 340 public and private childcare places. For the first time, this Council has an affordable housing policy, a way to manage affordable housing, and we've managed to get a contribution of $850,000 of seed funding for affordable housing. Sporting fields have also been a major commitment. In over 26 years, no new sporting fields were built under the former ALP and Liberal Council. This Council has built four new sporting fields at the cost of just under $2 million. And by the end of this year, this Council will be carbon neutral. Under the Greens, they've rolled out photovoltaics across buildings, co-generation facilities and managed to reduce carbon emissions significantly. And when it comes to development applications, there's some important statistics. In 2008, when that new council was elected, the amount of DAs that have been sitting in the system for over 240 days was 33%. Under this council today, not one. Not one DA in excess of 240 days. Under that old council, processing times on average were 138 days. Under this council, 89 days. So the Greens have been leading, and also when it comes to new housing numbers, oh, no, this council is silence. exceeding new housing numbers. 2036 Metro Strategy sets targets. This council will exceed them by almost 20 per cent. They're doing the heavy lifting on development. When it comes to transparency, the council abolished fees for FOIs, encouraging transparency, and abolished the free provision of alcohol before count to councillors before council meetings, something which was long overdue. When it comes to parking, it's a critical issue in my community, and I'm glad that I moved to the council supported the trial of 30-minute free parking metres so that we can measure the impact on local shops and businesses. Free Wi-Fi has been introduced to our libraries and is now being rolled out through our parks and the high street in the local community, free Wi-Fi. And all of this was funded responsibly. The debt service ratio has halved under this council from 4.4% to 2%. The rate rises have been more than half of that of the former Greens Labor Council. Lower rates, lower debt service ratio, improved services. Direction, focus, delivering and planning. I'd like to thank all of those people in the community who have worked so hard because the social justice aspect was also important. One dollar now to get into our pool for concession card holders. 
I'd like to thank the Mayor and the community that I work with as a state member. I'd like to thank all of the dedicated councils from all parties, in particular the Greens colleagues on this council, Mayor Rochelle Porteous, Deputy Mayor Michelle McKenzie, Councillors Daniel Kogoy, Alan Sinis and Cassie Plata. I look forward to their vision and uh, commitment in the coming years. Thank you. Order. Our private member statements have been concluded and in accordance with the standing and sessional orders, the House now stands adjourned until Thursday, Tuesday, the 4th of September 2012 at 12 noon.